Good morning and welcome to the midweek message, which this week is entitled The Principle of Personal Accountability. So Jeremiah 31, 29 to 30. In those days, people will no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Instead, everyone will die for their own sin. Whoever eats sour grapes, their own teeth will be set on edge. So here's a quote from a um, one-year Bible and just sums up this reality. Popular culture tells us that we are never at fault for our own failings. Rather, society, parents and our environment are to blame. Sound familiar, parents? While it is true that circumstances can affect us in ways that are beyond our control, too many believe that they are never accountable for any of their own actions. It's always someone else's fault. End of quote. So what led to this above statement then in the Jeremiah passage that we quoted? Well, God had sent multiple messengers to warn them to turn away from their wicked ways, speaking to Israel, and they needed to turn back to God. And he sent Jeremiah himself, who was a very unpopular preacher for what he said. But he stuck to the truth of what told him, and the people were to turn back to God. And they didn't. They refused to own their own sin. And uh, this is uh, also quoted in, in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 2. It says, the, souls who sins, the soul who sins is the one who will die. So it seemed at the time that the feeling was pretty widespread that Israel was being punished for the sins of previous generations, just like us who like to blame everyone else, our parents, our environment, etc. for our own sins. So they were doing that, blaming pre previous generations. Then they felt, you because God is unjust. You know, why are we being punished? But they failed to acknowledge their own sin before a holy God. Of course, this kind of blame shifting has been around forever and ever. Um, going way back to the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, we know the old saying is quite true. That Adam blamed Eve, Eve blamed the snake, and the snake didn't have a leg to stand on. So, uh, in, in, the Isaiah pass, sorry, in the Jeremiah passage, the Lord speaking through Jeremiah is bringing home this principle of personal accountability. We are responsible and accountable for our own actions, our words, our lifestyle. Uh, sadly, today also, um, we don't have these strong preachers like in Jeremiah's day. We have sort of popular preachers. And if you're a popular preacher and you're trying to attract people to your services and what's being said, then it's not popular to speak about personal accountability. It's not popular to speak about being accountable before a holy God. So, on the other hand, the Bible is very clear about how the sin of Adam has influenced all of us. And the first way is inherited guilt. So, we're all guilty before God because of Adam's sin. And therefore, Romans 5 verse 12, Sin came into the world through one man, that would be Adam, and death through sin. And so, death spread to all men because all men Sin. So the context in the passage shows that Paul is not speaking about actual everyday sins that we commit, but rather that through the death of Adam, all men sinned, which of course includes women, sorry ladies, therefore the whole human race, including you and I, was represented by Adam at the time of testing in the Garden of Eden. So really what this means is that if it was me or you in the Garden of Eden, all of us, the whole of humanity throughout all the generations would have failed the test the same way that Adam and Eve did. So Adam and Eve are therefore our representatives. Adam specifically, he is our representative and he sinned and God counted us guilty together with Adam and Eve. Sometimes this technical term is, is called imputed. Um, it's used here meaning God counted Adam's guilt as also belonging to you and I because we would have failed the test the same way that Adam did. And then there's, secondly, there's inherited corruption. So this means we have all... A sinful, we've also inherited a sinful nature from, uh, from Adam because of his sin. So in, in, in addition to the legal guilt God imputes on us because of Adam's sin, we also inherit a sinful nature because of Adam's sin. So sometimes this is called original sin or original uh, pollution or original corruption. So yeah, we're calling it original corruption here. Um, and David clarified this in Psalm 51 verse 5. He says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Now, he's not saying that his mother was sinning. He's saying that 
I, I am, uh, I'm a sinner. So as far as I look back over my life, since as far as the beginning, I can remember that I had a sinful nature that turned me away from God. Um, and he goes on in Psalm 51 to say, have mercy on me, O God. You know, don't, not have mercy on my mother. Have mercy on me, O God. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. So David understood that as far back as he could remember, he had a sinful nature and he was accountable to God for that. And so what does this all mean? Well, it means that by taking personal accountability for our sin, we realize that we need a savior. We realize that we need the beauty of the gospel and that God knew this would be our predicament. And that's why he provided a savior for absolutely everybody in the world. Romans 8, <clears throat> 10 to 12, as the scripture says, no one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly wise. No one is seeking God. All have turned away. All have become useless. No one does good, not even one. So from Adolf Hitler, who blatantly had a sinful life, to Mother Teresa, who had this beautiful life, everybody is sinful and everybody therefore needs a savior because the standard of heaven is perfection absolute perfection and only one person that we know of who has ever lived or ever will has reached perfection of course that is jesus and that's why we need a, a savior romans 3 23 for everyone has sinned we all fall short of the glorious standard of perfection so so god knew uh, this would be our predicament so he he made a unique way for us romans goes on Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. This is the beauty of the gospel when we realize our predicament. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. Romans 3 verse 24. So the way, friends, to a more joyful life, a life of integrity, a life that matches what we say and who we are to how we live is to take personal responsibility to be accountable for our, our sinful actions to stop the blame shifting stop blaming our ancestors stop blaming the previous government but to be accountable and say what about me what about my sin my faults and then be accountable to one another acknowledge those we've hurt our, our faults acknowledge our side of the disagreement the struggle the pain god knows everything anyway friends so why don't we Come clean with him today in personal accountability. Let's make it a new day. Make it a new start. Let's pray together. Father, we are sorry for the blame shifting we so often do. We are sorry for the times we blame others without owning up to our own faults, our sins, our mistakes. Today, we gratefully receive the gift, the perfect gift, the righteous life of the Lord Jesus Christ, who makes us right before the Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, friends, and have a wonderful day. Look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Goodbye now.